here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto with actor Patrick McKenna. Thank you so much for coming today. What inspired you to become an actor? Uh, actually, I've, probably my ADHD, just the fact that I was bouncing around all the time showing off and it's, I better find something to do with that. Mm -hmm. So I went to Second City and uh, started hanging around there and got an audition and suddenly I was in the group and suddenly I was an actor and I was 21 and getting married a month later. <laughs> and how was um, working at Second City, how did that prepare you for your career as an actor? It was fantastic because it prepares you in the sense that uh, you get to discover who you are because you're improvising. You're just making it up as you go along so no one's telling you how to think or telling you what's funny. You're discovering it the audience is responding. It either works or it doesn't and they tell you right away. So you educate yourself pretty quick. So you learn to read a script differently to uh, live in the moment of the script and all those type of things, work with the cast, work with the, figure out the dynamics of scenes. So all those things that I never had any training for, I never did go to school for this, uh, just kind of fell naturally into the rest of the, of the progression. When Red Green Show came along and they were handing me scripts, um, suddenly I had to learn 56 pages in three days. It was very much like improvising. You just understood the gist of the scene and you could run with that and learn the lines. Mm -hmm. So I started to discover I could learn lines very quickly. I could be in the moment quite quickly. I understood character. So Second City was the best school I could ever have possibly went to. And you've spoken a lot on ADHD and getting it as an adult mm -hmm. or being diagnosed as an adult. What has that whole experience been like being able to impart your experience to others? That's probably the best thing I've ever done because when we do these seminars, uh, we'll have 1,200 people who are there because they think they're there for their husband or their wife or their son or something, and they discover that it's probably them. It came from them. Mm -hmm. So you see people who come in with some kind of concern, and two hours later they walk out with an answer. So the immediate reaction of, of somebody being healed is incredible. It's the closest thing I've ever come to being like a gospel preacher where people are just thunderous in this new revelation of who they are, why they are, the problems they've had in life. They can now apply something towards it. It's been the mo most re rewarding, remarkable thing I've done. And do you think having ADHD has, in fact, helped you? And do you think, you know, these sometimes things that are seen as difficulties can actually make us better people or make us do more with our lives? For me, it certainly has because it uh, allowed me to, ADHD is particularly great for improvising because you just are in that moment and you're flying around and you're letting all the thoughts flow. So it really complements that type of environment. Usually they say about you know 80% of the acting environment usually has some kind of ADHD mm -hmm. because it allows that. It's, it's short term work so you don't have to spend a long time in a cubicle. You're out there just playing and then six weeks later after play's done you move on to something else. That's great for the ADHD mindset. Mm -hmm. It's a little harder to be a production coordinator but it's great to be on stage. And you've been nominated for so many different awards. You've won three Geminis. How does it feel to be recognized by the film and TV community? It's very bizarre because, as I said, I had no training, so I didn't really expect this to go much further than, because with ADD, you don't really think much further than your hand. <laughs> so I was just kind of in it for the ride, and then when suddenly the work was getting me rewarded and awards, you start to believe in yourself and start to build on that success. And that opened a lot of other doors, allowed me to do other types of programs that I didn't think I was able to do, be it dramas, films, uh, directing plays, things that I didn't really think I'd be stepping into. But because of those awards, it's changed a lot. And are there any projects in particular that are really close to your heart that stand out for you? Oh, so many. The, the Red Green Show in particular, because uh, that was such a silly, silly show. Mm -hmm. And we just thought it would go a season, and I was playing the biggest, broadest character, and we, you know, we were just having fun. And the show got canceled right away. And the audience wrote in and kept it on the air. And that was basically how it stayed on the air for 15 years. It was audience-driven. None of the networks understood it. We got canceled from every network in the country and picked <laughs> up by the next one. And it stayed that way because the audience dr drove it. And that was really rewarding, knowing that you were doing something inside a small studio that you know thousands to millions of people are responding to it in a positive way. That's great. And it shows that even time, sometimes authority figures tell you you're wrong, mm -hmm. people and audiences will tell you you're right. And to be able to be, have the luck to be able to follow that is a real gift. And meeting the fans has been incredible, what that silly show meant to them, mm -hmm. because it spoke to a kind of a middle ground of, uh, of North America, not necessarily New York or L.A. To mindsets. And there's a whole bunch of audience people in there in the middle kind of going, we don't really have anything to watch. So that show kind of filled that niche, and that was quite wonderful too. 
and being, you know, the forever child is great when you have ADD. It's like that's the character was like that, and the children responding to it that they could watch it with their parents and so on. It was a very positive atmosphere, and that's hard to create and maintain. And we touched on it a little bit, but can you tell me a little more about your acting process and when you get a script, how you approach it? Well, uh, I approach the script and that I just read it as, as generally as I can, just to get an idea of the story. And then I started thinking about where's my character in the story and what spoke am I in the wheel? What's my responsibility in the story? So I don't make it about me, the actor, I make it about the character. Always focusing what the character has to do and his, his uh, necessity in the story. And then I start to just believe in that and build on that. And then I start working on the lines, just letting them flow a little bit. And then because of the improvisational background, I just once I memorize the lines, I just try to say them a bunch of different ways. Mm -hmm. Just walk around, I'll say them angry, I'll say them funny, I'll say them silly, I'll use a different voice, I'll walk around differently. Just to try it on to see what fits, what still tells the story without being selfish, but somewhat original at the same time. And what do you have coming up next? Do you think you'll do some more theater, or are you going to focus more on TV and film? Well, probably a lot of TV and films coming up in the next little while. I just wrapped on a series uh, that got picked up immediately called Hard Rock Medical uh, for TVO and Australian television. So we did our first season, and uh, it hasn't even aired yet, and they've already picked up the second and third season. So we'll be back up in Sudbury, Ontario, shooting that during the winter, which is, you know, fun. <laughs> and, uh, so that's going to take a long time, which is great because I've been I get involved to do some of the directing and some of the writing on that as well. That's that's one of the advantages of getting a few awards. You can kind of say, you know what I want to do, yeah. <laughs> and they go, sure, if you're willing to come to Sudbury, you can direct. <laughs> so that's probably going to take a lot of time. And also um, with the ADHD, I'm still touring the country and North America, basically doing lectures at universities and so on to teachers and boards of education about the students' perspective with ADD, uh, as well as. Um, starting up a new web series with Colin Mockery and I for uh, called uh, Patients Please, about two divorced doctors doing anything they can to make money. And what advice would you give to an aspiring actor? Do everything. There is nothing you can do that can harm your, your reputation or career in Canada. Do commercials, do film, do TV, do web series, do anything you can to get in front of a camera and to be practicing your craft because it will always take you to tomorrow. And that's all you really want to do is make a career out of this and not a day. And where's the best place to find out more information on you and all of this exciting work that you're doing online? Uh, you can go to uh, patrickmckenna.ca and uh, there's a list of where I'll be performing and the things coming up and all those wonderful things you can do. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Patrick. Congratulations on all of your successes and best of luck in the future. Thank you so much, Katie. And you too. Thank you. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto.